talk of this session is private sequential learning by Quan Su, uh, joint work with John Tsitsiklis and Ji Su. Thank you very much. Um, so this is joint work with the uh, Tsitsiklis from MIT and uh, our student, Xu, who is not related to me, um, uh, who unfortunately couldn't make it due to a visa issue. All right, so uh, privacy has surfaced quite a bit in this session. And I just want to start by reminding um, everyone here, probably agree with me, that adaptive learning is good. And why is good? Because it brings substantial gain by tailoring future actions of your learning to what you learned in the past. So you don't waste time asking useless questions. But unfortunately, it's a double-edged sword in the sense that, by definition, such adaptive actions is revealing the internal knowledge I have because I would have done something differently if I had known something differently. And that naturally raises privacy concerns. So this talk is to look at a model for studying the privacy versus query complexity trade-off in sequential learning. And specifically, we're trying to answer a question of this kind. How can I learn efficiently so that if one sees how I learn, but they will not know what I'm learning. And that's kind of the guiding question of this talk. Okay, so let's jump directly into the model. Um, we call this the private sequential learning model. So there's one learner who's trying to find a target, simply a scalar in a compact interval, zero to one, let's say. And she does that by submitting inquiries or actions in the sequential fashion. Let's call that QK as a kth query. Then for each query, a response is produced simply saying whether the truth is to the left or not to the left of the set query. So it's indicator function of x star being greater than or equal to qk. And finally, after n queries are submitted, the learner looks at all the responses in an and try to produce the estimator x hat for the target. Potentially, this is a randomized algorithm. And we say this strategy is epsilon accurate if, with the probability one, I am within the epsilon ball of the truth. OK, is that clear? It's a very classical setup of learning using binary responses. All right, so two very simple examples. Let's look at the simplest policy that does that. Well, let's call that epsilon uniform. I simply bombard the entire interval deterministically with a grid of size epsilon. Q1, Q2, Q3, and so on. Clearly, I can produce the estimator. I simply look at the midpoint of the interval containing the target. I'll be accurate. And I get a complexity of one of epsilon. Pretty, pretty inefficient, but does the job. Let's do a little better. So this is bisection search. Um, let's say here in this example, the truth is 0.4, and I want to learn it within 0.2. All right, so I put the first question right in the middle tells me it's left, I go left, put in the middle, and tells me it's right, so I go to the right, put in the middle of that interval, tell me it's one, um, and now I'm pretty confident I found the answer, so I produce estimator being the mid of the smallest interval known to contain the target, and this gives me an exponential reduction in um, complexity. So all very simple stuff, so just two examples. So far, so good, but let's introduce the privacy aspect. We're assuming that there's an adversary who actually observes all the queries you submit, but not the answers. If they also see the answers, you're doomed. So just the questions. And then based on those, we want to construct, uh, the adversary wants to construct an estimator also to guess this target without learning, just by free writing, essentially. And we say the estimator is delta L accurate if for all target that could potentially be there, I can reconstruct it with error delta with a probability at least one over L. So for those of you who are familiar with pack learning, it's a very familiar constraint. So essentially, it's learnable. Um, but that's bad news for me. So as a learner, I want to make sure that does not happen. So we say a learning strategy is delta L private if there is no such delta L accurate estimator for the adversary. And here, the reason we use L is L captures a level of privacy. Level as in if L is 2, they cannot guess me with a probability of 50%. If L is 3, it's 33%, and so on. Okay. All right, so now, just revisit these two simple examples. We can see the epsilon uniform is terrible in complexity, 
but it's trivially always private. My questions are not even correlated with the target. On the other hand, the bisection search is provably optimal in terms of complexity, but it's never private because, as you can see, if I know you're using bisection, I can follow you till the last question and simply pick the last question. That's close enough for me to the target. So those are the two extremes. What happens in between? All right, so that's our main definition, complexity of private sequential learning. N star, epsilon delta L, is the minimal number of queries needed for there to exist a user, a learner strategy that is both accurate and private. So how many questions do I need? And I want to point out we're looking at a regime where things are reasonable, so the learner wants to learn more accurately than the adversary, and that accuracy shouldn't be too big, because otherwise they can just randomly guess any point. All right, so that's our main result, which is the following complexity bound. So in that regime, we see that this complexity is upper lower bounded by these two quantities. And the uh, one I want to highlight is a 2L. Essentially, you see a log factor here, which you would expect, but in both cases, you see a 2L increment in the complexity. To make it more clear, let's look at the case where the delta, which is the adverse phase error, is the worst case for the learner. So it's equal to 1 over L. In that case, the bound simplifies and becomes essentially tight if you ignore the minus 4 factor. So here, the complexity says you need to do some kind of bisection search, which you probably would have done anyway. But in addition, you put in 2L more questions. Therefore, the take-home message here is that, roughly speaking, here privacy implies an additive 2L overhead on query complexity. Now, a brief note about this uh, proof sketch. Uh, the, main technique, the main technique is to characterize the adversary's information set, which is defined by, given the queries, what are the um, plausible targets that are consistent with what, what I see. So we're just going to be tracking the evolution of this kind of set. Now, on that end, for the upper bound, we construct explicitly a query strategy that ensures the information set shatters into L separate locations. So to show that the adversary cannot be sure which location actually contains a true answer. And the complexity comes from the fact that we'll do a localized bisection, getting the log factor, plus two queries to create each of the other confusing locations, therefore 2L. It's very simple, binary plus 2L. Now the lower bound, um, we want to show the converse. It's a little trickier because we want to show the 2L cannot be combined with those uh, bisection search has to be distinct, and in that we use a combinatorial argument that based on recursion, and that completes the proof. Now, at the high level, I just want to summarize. This work is about looking at a simple new model on how to quantify the trade-off between privacy and learning, and the main message is under this model, the cost for privacy is linear. And there's a bunch of future directions, um, but also just at the high level, um, I guess this work is also kind of speaking to the restricted nature of differential privacy. Here we have a very specific loss function of reconstructing the answer, and that's what we have. And I think a, a more tailored version of privacy gives you much stronger efficiency in terms of complexity. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe we have a time for a quick question. Please. Right. So uh, I'm not sure if it's exactly the work uh, have in mind, but I think cr cryptography, uh, this question has surfaced. And um, whether or not they allow uh, positive recovery, I'm not quite clear. So we allow some kind of a chance of being guessed, but not exact secrecy. Oh yeah, I'm not I'm not uh, uh, very familiar as well, but definitely happy to look into that. Very sure. All right, let's thank uh, Quang again. Thank you. And actually, let's thank all the speakers for today's sessions. And that's it. I guess we'll reconvene in like uh, 
25 minutes.